Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center. We hope you're all staying safe out there, but in here it's time for us to take a look at some of the coolest knives that have hit our shelves in the past week. Let's check them out. Now the first knife we're going to look at is the Ontario Knife Company Shikra, which is coming in at about $46, or just above I should say. Now, Ontario, of course, well known for their budget-minded rat series of folding knives. So they've definitely got a strong positioning on the affordable end of the spectrum. And this one really elevates their game. It's definitely a step up from those rat knives, but it still comes in less than 50 bucks. As far as materials, we've got an Aus 8 blade. The length is a little bit over three inches, about three and a quarter. Nice, acute spear point profile with a hollow grind. It's gonna be a precise cutter day today, especially with that narrow tip. You're gonna be able to get some uh, you know, be very agile with it, get into some tight corners if you need to. And the handle scale on the front is Micarta, which is very nice. A few little milled lines there add a little bit of uh, a little bit of texture or a little bit of grip. And the finish on it is sort of a matte finish as well, so it's not super slick or glossy. And it's got a pretty cool look too, especially with that black stone washed finish of the blade. Now all that's well and good and would certainly be, you know, in range, I would say, for the price uh, that we're looking at for this knife but it's when you turn things over that it gets really interesting. First off, this is not a stainless steel frame lock. This is actually titanium, which to get that at this price is a good thing indeed. Keeps the weight down, still plenty strong, and you've even got a lock bar insert there to interface with the, with the steel of the knife itself, so it's gonna wear for a long time, or it's gonna stay stable, I should say, for a long, long time. It's got an over-travel arrestor in the lock bar. All very premium features for any knife really, but to see them again in this price range is quite nice. And in order to stay competitive, ball bearing flipper. Really impressive package put together very well and I'm glad to see an American company like Ontario stepping up their game. This is still an imported knife, I'll grant you, but I'm really happy with it. Two position pocket clip, tip, side, uh, tip up or down on the right side. It's definitely got a lot going for it and at this price, under 50 bucks, it's definitely an early contender. It's definitely in the running, I should say for the best new budget knives of 2020. All right, this next knife is from Kershaw and we've actually got several new Kershaw models uh, right here in front of me. Now, bonus points real quick if you can tell me who designed this knife. I don't even have to tell you. You can tell just by the way it looks. This is a new Dmitry Sinkovich design. This is called the Tumbler. It features D2 tool steel and comes in at about 70 bucks. This is gonna be a great slicing knife with that upswept profile, kind of a trailing point tip with a nice continuous curve to the edge, this thing is ready to just move through, slice through some material very nicely. The D2 steel is hard working and the blade finish is hard working too. We've got a nice stone washed finish, so it's gonna help uh, hide, hide your scratches while you're cutting or once you've cut a few times with it, it's not gonna look as beat up real quickly as say a mirror polished blade will. Now this may be hard for it to come across in, uh, in pictures, but this is not a synthetic handle. We've actually got, or I guess technically it's kind of synthetic, but it's not a, uh, like a, a nylon handle. These are G10 with a carbon fiber inlay. There's a lot of milling going on. There's a lot of little uh, kind of fine details so that doesn't exactly jump off the page when you're looking at it or the screen, I should say. I hope you're not looking at this video in a book. That wouldn't make much sense. Um, but it's there and it provides a, a cool little bit of contrast, it keeps the handle nice and lightweight. I mean, overall, this whole knife is only about two and a half ounces. It's very, very easy to carry. Deep carry pocket clip as well, and that's gonna help too. Now, I really like the way they've mounted this clip. It's mounted from the rear with a screw uh, pointing in towards the center of the knife. You see that with knives like the Buck Vantage. I've always said that's one of my favorite deep carry pocket clips in the business because it really is deep carry and it's reversible. Same here uh, for left or right carry. So I'm really, I'm really excited to see that implementation here on this knife as well. While I'm holding it here on the back side, you can also see we've got Kershaw's patented subframe lock mechanism. With this, you can get a nice wide contact patch between the lock bar and the knife itself, like you would on a frame lock, but they can still use the same handle material on the back that they do on the front. Keeps it nice and lightweight. It creates a pretty darn cool look as well. That lock definitely performs and so does the action of the blade because we've got KVT ball bearings in the pivot. All around a really solid package and decently affordable too at about 70 bucks. Not a, a cheap under $50 knife, but it's definitely attainable and you definitely get a lot for that money, I think. 
All right, next we've got another Kershaw. This is the payout. It's a little bit bigger and actually a little bit cheaper than that Sinkovich. This one comes in at about $60. Got D2 steel, about two and a half inches of it. Sort of a, I guess you could call it a clip point shape because we do have a straight clip here, but we've got an interesting kink here in the spine. Um, mostly just for aesthetics, really. I don't see that serving any purpose in terms of uh, thumb placement. Eh, maybe you can get your, your uh, index finger up there, makes a nice index point for it. But all in all, it's going to perform like a nice versatile clip point blade. We've got a good flat grind on there. Nice thin blade stock on top of that too. So it's going to be a pretty efficient cutter, I think. Stonewashed finish again, which as I mentioned, I love very much. Now the handles on this knife bear a distinctive kind of kick down. What that does is even though you've got a lot of belly on this clip point, eh, maybe not a lot of belly, but certainly a fair amount of belly. It's going to bring the tip down a little bit as you point the knife. Material is stainless steel. We've got a frame lock on the back with some interesting uh, copper accents around the pivot here, which is also going to act as your over, over travel arrester, which is nice. Front side, you see that copper color uh, tied in in the front pivot hardware. And you've got stainless steel essentially as a bolster with black G10 near the back. A little bit more copper hardware comes in at the uh, standoff here right at the tail end of the knife, and that actually forms a small uh, lanyard hole as well. And this is a right side tip up pocket clip only. It is deep carry. It mounts inside the frame, which is quite nice. So you can't actually unscrew it from the outside, but it isn't reversible for the, uh, the left side if you're interested in that. But like the blade of the knife, the frame is also very thin. So even though this is a larger knife, you've got three and a half inches of steel, like I said, it's not going to be too hard to carry, at least in terms of bulk. It's a little bit heavier because of those stainless steel handles. I think this one comes in about 5.3 ounces, a little bit over five. And this one, part of why this is a little bit cheaper than that, uh, that other one we just looked at is this is a speed safe assisted opening knife. You don't have those ball bearings in the pivot, but you're going to get nice repeatable action every time. Thanks to that spring assist. All right, one more spring assisted knife from Kershaw, another speed safe. This is a new version of the Kershaw link, which I'm very excited about. And I think is my favorite link they've put out yet. And it all comes down to what they've done with the blade right here. Now you could get this blade before in your standard 420 HCs as well as higher end stuff like M390 or Alabama Damascus. But what they've done here is used their signature composite blade technology where the top half and bottom half of the blade kind of fit together like a jigsaw puzzle and are braze welded together. And they've created this cool kind of shark tooth pattern. And combined with the green aluminum handles here, it really reminds me of like some old school like World War II fighter planes. It has a really cool vibe right there. As far as the steel they've used on this composite blade, the spine is N690, so that's going to be stainless and decently tough. The actual cutting edge is CPM D2, not your just standard run of the mill D2. This is the particle version of it. So you're going to get nice, good edge retention like D2 without the really large carbides that can make it a little bit harder to sharpen than some other steels out there. Really top notch performance with this combination of materials. They've kind of stonewashed it and etched it a little darker. So you kind of have like a smoky, almost gunmetal look to the N690 and a little bit darker on that D2, CPM D2. The handles are aluminum, which the M390, this version of this knife also had aluminum scales, but they were black and just flat. They've added some machining on this version here, which really spices things up. Breaks up the palette of the knife just a little bit and then ties that in with that shark tooth inlay or that shark tooth blade treatment. They've also added a deep carry pocket clip right side or left side, and it definitely holds it nice and deep. Now, this is another great everyday carry. It's nice and slim. As you can see from that little graphic right back there, this is made in the USA. All of this stuff, premium materials, it all comes in at about 83 bucks, which I think is a phenomenal deal. Now, Kershaw is definitely known for making a lot of really good and really successful small pocket knives. And they've got a new one right now designed by Jens Anso. This is the Hub. Got a short blade, about 1.7 inches, so it's under that two inch mark, uh, but you still get a decent amount of edge because it does have a pretty significant amount of belly. And even though that may make it a little more prone to, let's say, slipping out of a cut, you'll have to be a little bit more careful with how you apply your pressure. Because of that, you do get more actual usable edge within that short blade length. The steel is HCR 13 MOV, which is not unexpected, especially at this price point. We're coming in at about 23 bucks. The handles themselves are glass reinforced nylon. We've actually got an aluminum backspacer, anodized blue to give it a little bit of extra color with a nice big lanyard section there right at the back. Not just good for lanyards, I think this would make a great place to put a, uh, to attach this to a keychain because this would be a very good keychain knife 
despite having a right side tip up pocket clip as well if you want to carry it that way. Now they could have gone with a very simple handle on here, but they've given it, uh, they've, they've done some interesting things at least in terms of how it looks with some lines going on a little bit forward and back, adds a little bit of traction and they even make the, uh, the front pivot hardware interact with those lines and echo those shapes just a little bit, which is pretty cool. As far as usability, you can see we've got two large finger grooves in addition to that backspacer that sticks out. So this is a small knife, about a two and a half finger grip for probably just about anyone out there, but it holds the blade nice and secure. It doesn't feel like it's going to slip out of your hand. Just a really solid budget keychain or small pocket knife coming in just over 20 bucks. Now, speaking of solid budget knives from Kershaw, their new slip joints for 2020 are starting to come in. This is the Culpepper. Uh, we've also got their two blade trapper, which is the Gadsden model. Both of those are in now. I just don't have that one right here in front of me, but this is a very simple single bladed design, kind of Barlow inspired. We've got black G10 handles, stainless steel bolster and brass liners as well. So it has pretty, a pretty classic look while still updating the materials to a more modern G10 as opposed to old like bone or woods. The steel is 7CR17 MOV. We've got this uh, kind of classic clip point shape from some old school pocket knives with a long pull for opening on both sides, which is a nice touch. A lot of times they only have that opening, uh, that pull on one side or the other. We've also got a little bit of jimping here right behind the thumb and sort of a modern uh, a, a nod to modernism over the, uh, some of the old school knives. Uh, but it's got a nice flat grind. It's got a nice usable shape. And this whole thing, this whole package comes in at about $26. Now, if that knife was just too affordable for you, I've got your antidote right here. I've got a new Benchmade proper. This is a limited edition gold class coming in at a full $1,000. Now, that's definitely a lot of money, but let me show you what you get. First of all, the blade is a Damasteel in their Munin pattern. Now, this is their standard sheep's foot profile blade with the mid-height flat grind and a swedge. Uh, but they've got, gone a little bit further than the standard model with some nice details. The, the spine back here is crowned a little bit, as well as out here near the tip. Just a little bit of a nicer touch and a little more comfortable to use as well. And of course, if you are going to actually use this knife, since I mentioned usability, that Dama Steel is going to give you powder metallur metallurgy performance. So you've got super steel performance with the Damascus look, which is very nice. Now the handles are a little more complex in their construction than the standard model and definitely a lot more premium with the materials. First of all, we've got a uh, burgundy and black linen micarta. I would have said just burgundy if I were guessing, but yeah, there are some little separations uh, between the dark red and the darker black. Looks really cool, has sort of a, uh, a high satin finish, I would say. It's not polished, but it feels really good. And we have Mokume bolsters. Definitely a premium material, and it looks really good next to that blade. And on top of that, we've got some thin black liners on either side of the metal part of the back spring as well. Now, speaking of that back spring, you can see it's sort of a satin finish here, but right here on the sort of jimping on the front of the leaf spring itself, you can see some little gold peeking out. And actually, if you turn the knife and look inside, the underside of that back spring is also completely finished in a gold finish. And it's polished to like a really high gloss too, so you get some good light reflections. As you look down the knife, look into the knife, you can see some gold and some glow going on. And that effect is further accentuated because the liners themselves have been jeweled, so you get a lot of sparkle, a lot of glow, and it ties in with the gold color of that Mokume and the gold hardware. Really just a really classy, high-end piece from Benchmade. And along with the new mini Crooked River that they came out with, definitely a more subtle take on some of their gold class stuff. I've mentioned this a little bit before. Some of their gold class stuff can get, I hesitate to use the word gaudy, but they're, they're definitely more shouty in their nature and more in your face. These two, uh, this design and the, the mini Crooked River especially are a little more refined, but certainly no less special. I mean, I gotta say, I like what they're doing going with that direction because these are definitely some of my favorite gold class from Benchmade I've seen yet. All right, next I've got a new design from Wee Knife Company. This is called the Kite Fin, and I've got two versions of it here. We've got the marbled carbon fiber, as well as one of the titanium framed options. There's a few different colors of titanium available, and there's also a shred carbon fiber if you're, if you're interested in that as opposed to the marbled version. Now this knife is a little bit smaller than I initially thought just from when I first saw the photos of it, and in hand it actually has impressed me a lot more than I thought it would, again, just based on the photos. 
they're very refined EDC flippers. I think they make a great gentleman's knife. They're very lightweight too, very easy to carry. I mean, this carbon fiber one comes in just barely over two ounces. The blade steel is S35VN, about three and a quarter inches, and titanium frame lock flipper, as you probably would expect from a Wii. And the carbon fiber version has a little bit of a radius to it to give a little bit of uh, kind of the, the light helps dance off of that a little bit better, and it feels a little very nice in the hand as well. The back side is kept flat, but we have a deep carry pocket clip, fairly deep carry, uh, right side tip up only. And we've got some nice little details like these holes that have been not just drilled in, but they've also been uh, chamfered over, revealing a little bit of a uh, contrasting color, which is quite nice. The blade shape is certainly gonna be usable and they've kept it nice and thin too. On top of that, you've got a nice deep hollow grind to keep it nice and thin behind the edge. It's gonna be a very good everyday carry slicer. It's got a good enough length to get most things done and still enough of a finger choil where you could choke up if you needed to for even more control. And I just love how acute that tip is. Really, just based on photos, I wasn't expecting to be as impressed with this blade, but I really like it, especially since this only comes in at about 157. Now the titanium versions are a little bit different. We don't get the contouring on the front, they're flat instead, but we do get this milled out swoosh that's anodized a different color than the rest of the frame. Gives it a little bit of extra visual flair and adds a little bit of grip as well. It definitely has something for your finger to grab onto there. Even when you're holding it like so, your, kind of, your fingertips kind of land there and it helps to keep a positive and sure hold on the knife. As I mentioned earlier, a few different colors available. This is the stonewashed blue frame with the gold accent. And the clip on this is actually flamed titanium, which is quite nice. Still has the same accent holes, and the way that flame takes on some of the surrounding colors, it really blends nicely with the blue of the frame. All right, so right about 157, those are definitely attainable knives. I think they're very nicely priced, but let's get back into some more truly budget stuff. We've got a new large folder from Civivi, which is of course the budget sister brand to Wii Knife Company. This is the Asticus coming in at about $55. Got a nice straight back blade, and actually there is a, just a hint of, of drop to it if you lay the spine straight on a table, but you're really never gonna notice that. It's really more of a straight back profile in actual use. Almost four inches, we're at about 3.8 of D2 blade steel. Like the kite fin, they've kept it fairly thin and given it this nice broad hollow grind and very fine behind the edge. D2 steel with that, with that very thin edge is gonna cut for a very long time, very nicely, and pretty efficiently too, thanks to the geometry they've used here. Like a lot of the Civivi lineup, this is a liner locking folder with G10 scales. But in this case, instead of keeping the scales all the way out to the edge of the liners themselves, they've had it drop in a little bit to create a little bit of visual interest. And they probably save a little bit of material that way, but primarily it creates a nice swoop there and gives you a little bit more to grip onto. And it looks cool. A few different colors available. I've got the green or the OD green G10 right here. Deep carry pocket clip, both sides, right or left carry in a tip up configuration and a nice hidden lanyard attachment point. It's got all the essentials. It's even got ceramic bearings in the pivot, making this a nice flipper. And that's what Civivi does really well. They kind of have everything you need and everything you might want um, as, a, as a good baseline for a very good price. Like I said, 55 bucks for this brand new Asticus. All right, next up, I've got a new multi-tool. Actually, not, not really, but kinda. We do have a bottle opener here, but this is a blade. This is the new Kiri EDC from Civivi Knives, named of course for its Kiridashi inspired shape. This knife comes in at about 40 bucks, and we've got both a black stonewashed and a standard stonewashed version available. 9CR18 MOV stainless steel, so you're gonna get performance roughly like 440C. The point is nice and acute, and we've got a sturdy flat grind going on here. So this is not a, uh, even though you can get some fine work done with this, especially with that acute tip, this is not a you know, dainty knife, I would say, especially with the grind like that. It feels like it could undergo some serious use. Any, certainly anything you'd wanna tackle with a smaller edge like this, it's gonna be able to work because at the end of the day, like the old school Kiridashis were utility knives first. They had to really stand up to the rigors of day-to-day -day worksmanship. Now, even though my hands are a little bit on the larger side and this may have been designed with slightly smaller hands in mind, that may not be the case. I may be projecting there. I can still get a nice, uh, nice four finger grip on the knife. My pinky kind of tails off on the, the back of it there. And it's nice and comfortable. The edges are all chamfered over so you don't have any hot spots there. And even though there's no sort of finger guard, 
they've rounded over the heel of the edge here. So even if I'm kind of squeezing and my finger gets pushed forward a little bit, there's no sharp point to kind of jab me while I'm working. Carrying it is gonna be nice and easy. I'm not gonna pull it out of the package, but we've got a Kydex neck sheath with a breakaway ball chain. So if you're using this in a shop and it happened to get caught in some machinery, it's not gonna kind of drag you in with it. And then if you're using that bottle opener, make sure it's sheathed before you do. Safety first, guys. All right, the next two Civivis are actually variants on some pre-existing designs. The first is their Rustic Gent, which has been very popular since it first came out. In fact, I don't even think I got to show the standard model in one of these new items videos because they were our first batch was in and out the door so quickly. But we've now got their Damascus bladed versions in stock. Price comes in just under 100 bucks. We've got a three inch blade with their Damascus steel that's based on 9CR18 MOV. So again, you should get performance roughly on par with 440C. Really cool profile, a little bit more uh, swoopy than some traditional slip joints. And even though this is a lockback, I do say slip joint when I talk about this knife because it really does carry a slip joint vibe. And it even has, when you go to unlock it, a nice half stop in the travel, which is something you only typically usually see in a slip joint. So really this is for the slip joint fan who wants a lock or for someone who wanted to be a slip joint fan but didn't wanna carry something without a lock. This is a great option. And this version right here comes with their tan micarta handles, has almost a burlap quality to it. But there's also black G10 if you want something more, uh, a little more subtle with these carbon fiber bolsters. Really, really cool knife. It even has a leather pocket sheath to go with the knife. Slips in very easily. Then you've got the knife secured and stationary in your pocket. Again, unlike an old school slip joint, if you don't like the way they float around in your pockets, great way to handle that problem right here. All right, one new Damascus variant, or another new Damascus variant, I should say. This is the Elijah Isham Design Plethiros, coming in at 102 with the Damascus blade and golden sandalwood handles. There's a really striking grain going on here. Definitely classes up the, the knife, especially when you combine it with that Damascus steel. And it's pretty lightweight too because of that. The liner lock in this one is kept, uh, they've skeletonized it a bit, so it's not too heavy, doesn't weigh you down. We've still got a deep carry pocket clip for both sides of the knife. We've still got a ball bearing pivot and that really cool subtle flipper tab that sticks straight up, still flips nice and easily, then it disappears into the handle. I've always been a fan of this model, but I think this might be my favorite one yet. It's definitely a hard working model, despite looking kind of out there and, and like it might just be for style. I like the way the edge drops a little bit. So you're gonna be able to do some work on a board, like some scoring if you're gonna to need to. Maybe a bit of food prep, although you know, don't usually recommend that with a folder, but it would work in a pinch. It's gonna have good, long pulling slicing characteristics. Coming in at 102, this new Plutheros is very cool. All right, now coming way down in the, in the uh, budget range, we've got a new K-Bar, a new Jesse Jara's design. This is the Beartooth. Now this was based on a Jesse Jara's custom, but it's definitely got some K-Bar attitude here. It's kind of in a similar configuration we've seen some of their other knives, such as their Mule series. We've got a 440 blade, clip point shape, and this knife comes in at 19 bucks. Now what I like about this blade, in addition to kind of the simple but usable shape, is it's another very thin blade. We've got a mid-height hollow grind and a swedge on the clip point itself, a straight clip point profile. With that thin blade stock, again, good solid cutter for your money. Again, this is a less than $20 knife. It opens via these dual thumb studs, so right-handers or left-handers can use it. Same thing with the, uh, the clip as well. It is a four position clip. You can carry it tip up or down on either side. Of course, the liner lock which holds it open is nice and secure, but it is right-hand biased, of course, just by its very nature. So keep that in mind. Handles, stainless steel bolsters, black G10. Not, again, not a nylon handle, so it's a little bit of a step up there. Solid design, solid performance, solid price tag. All right, next up, We've got a new Boker Plus Flipper. This is called the Petite. It comes in at just under $80. Now in my mind, this actually reminds me a little bit of the CRKT Pilar, only it's a bit fancier and certainly a bit nicer put together. Not that the Pilar is bad, mind you, but this Boker is just executed to a higher standard. We've got a D2 sheep's foot style blade coming in just under three inches. Again, a great size for everyday carry. And it is a ball bearing flipper. So you've got that flipper tab there with really good action behind it. The handles are stainless steel, kept fairly flat, but we've got some nice angular portions here that are chamfered away to keep it, uh, keep it nice and comfortable. 
Just like the Pilar, this would be a great knife to use as a platform for engraving or any sort of custom work. And they've even kept the weight down a bit by milling out the inside of the stainless steel a bit, so it's not gonna be a boat anchor in your pocket. We've also got a black backspacer. This is actually G10. And you can see we've got a little post there with a pass-through to act as a lanyard hole. And we've even got a two-position pocket clip, right side or left side, tip up. Really solid little design. Really, if you're looking for a step up from some of those more budget-oriented options out there, but want that same style of blade, the Petite's gonna be a great option coming in, like I said, about 78 bucks. All right, next we've got a new fixed blade from Boker Plus, this is the Orca Pro. Now they're billing this as sort of an outdoor knife or maybe a survival knife. I think it actually has some combat applications going into it as well. At least it feels a little bit more like a combat knife to me. Price on this is about $97.50, so a little bit under, just under 100 bucks. We've got D2 steel with a little bit over five inches of reach. It's fairly thick, we're at about 3 16 of an inch with this recurve profile that gives us a lot of belly and a lot of cutting edge in that space with a hollow grind behind the edge and that swedge out near the tip. It's got a heavy stonewashed finish, which is nice. It's gonna be a good hardworking finish. And that recurve is fairly aggressive, I'd say. So that's gonna be really good on any sort of draw cut or anything, let's say you're working through some brush or some rope that you need to cut through, any kind of fibrous stuff like that. As you pull back, it's gonna hook into that material a little bit better than a straight edge would. I think it's also gonna work nicely if you're breaking down game on your latest hunting trip. And it's gonna be a really solid handle on here as well, because we've got micarta scales going on. They're pretty darn thick. They give you a really solid hold on the knife, and the contouring itself is done extremely well. Now the tang of the knife is proud of those handle scales a little bit, and I find for me personally, this is gonna be one I'd want to wear gloves on. But once you do, I'd be very happy with the grip. A lot of companies out there, sometimes with this style of knife, stick with a thinner, flatter scale. So I'm really pleased to say that's not the case here, and I'd like to see more stuff like this in the future. The sheath is really well executed as well. It's pretty simple. We've got a Kydex system here, but they even include a modular belt clip that's similar to a Blade Tech Tech Lock, so you can switch it around, carry it horizontal, vertical, maybe even on uh, a couple of diagonals. It's, again, simple, but very well executed. And that's the Boker Plus Orca Pro. All right, that's all I've got to show you for right now, but I wanna know from you guys, what was your favorite thing you saw this week? What else are you looking forward to next week so that we can make sure to, to cover it if we, uh, if we get it in? Again, this is all just the new stuff as we get it in. Let us know in the comments what you liked, and if you wanna get your hands on any of these, you can click the links in the description to take you over to knifecenter.com. I'm David C. Anderson. We'll keep coming back with these new items videos. Everyone out there, stay safe. See you next time. Good. Cue the comment section. Comments. <laughs> that was good. Well, thank you. Are you reversible? Those aren't beans. Bubbles. <laughs> Whoops. Nice job.